Hello listeners, I'm Radoslav Munarczyk and this is Business Night Tide, a podcast by Invest in Pomerania. And today uh, I'm super excited because I'm joined by a good friend of Invest in Pomerania, Olga Kuraksa from Cyclum. How are you? Uh, hi, hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> it's, a mar- it's a marvelous day because we're doing the recording actually on the first day of summer. So, uh, and there's a, it's, it's, it's sunny weather, so we're all in a good shape, I think. Yes, um, it's been uh, almost a year to the date since the, we, the last time we spoke, we, we had a little interview for our online page. What has changed for you? Because I guess you have a new position in organization. You're a VP for emerging accounts, uh, overseeing the whole Europe. But how has this uh, how has this year been treating you? How are uh, you? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I've started this in Poland as a general manager mm. for Poland, uh, Siglum Poland location, as well as Bulgaria and Ukraine. And I think uh, Siglum been growing uh, quite good that year. And um, it's uh, I've been offered a new position um, where uh, which are r- related more client interaction mm-hmm. and talking to clients and sales and farming of clients, right? To make sure that clients is get the right services, um, um, right balance of uh, services from all our delivery locations, but with focus on Poland, of mm-hmm. course. Right. So I got the portfolio of uh, almost hundred clients. And uh, now I'm working with them. They're mostly located in the UK uh, and uh, in Europe. Mm-hmm. Right. And you couldn't do it without a team, obviously, of course. Yeah, obviously. So how big a team are you managing and how do you uh, overcome the challenges of managing a diverse or multicultural team? Oh, uh, very good question. Actually, I have a team of seven account managers and Mm -hmm. uh, all of them located in different uh, locations. Some of them in Ukraine, some of them in Poland, some of them in Spain. Right. So uh, as as well as I have delivery team, small delivery team uh, that is helping me with uh, like project management and operations, which are also located in uh, Ukraine, Poland and India. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think uh, we are in IT companies in like in Ciclum, right? We are quite knowledgeable about how to manage uh, diverse, multinational, multicultural, distributed teams. Um, despite that, there are still the challenges that we are facing uh, every day is the communication, of course, right? So to make, to, to make it um, really work, we need to make sure that we are gaining from diversity. And uh, what, what I'm observing that sometimes uh, they can, we all speak good English, but because of the cultural difference or because of the different view on hierarchy or different view on the way people would like to be managed, right? There is all, they, that could lead to some um, team instability, to some challenges uh, within the team, right? So here is the most important is the, is the leadership style. You really have to show that you are gained from a diversity, not just say it, mm-hmm. you need to show it, right? So for example, in Cyclone, we have um, uh, lots of podcasts as well, uh, or webinars where people with different culture, uh, with different from, from from different areas of of the world can share their experience. So, like real people talking to real people is always good and share their 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 stories. Uh, we also, uh, for, for example, just recently I've been um, introducing a podcast um, describing about how to how to survive in unpredictable environment. This is where we are, uh, all of us now. And I think the feedback I got from the, my team members and from others is that, uh, Olga, you mentioned that it's not that, it's so easy to work with people you know, with people you like, with people you kind of have same even like values or mm-hmm. business processes, but can you actually gain from it or learn from it? So I really encourage people to, um, Try to work with someone you even don't like, right? To someone you can, you are difficult to to work with. Someone who make your life a little bit more difficult, mm-hmm. and that's uh, that's create an so fast growth and unpredictable outcome. Um, it's like men and women. I don't know, uh, Polish Ukrainians mm-hmm. r- write some uh, uh, experience in IT with experience from big four, like I am, for example. I am originally like first my ten years of career. I've been working in Deloitte in big four, mm-hmm. and when I joined IT company, I was super stressed 
<laughs> kind of. I was like, where is the structure? Why they even didn't lock their computers, for example? It was very <laughs> um, strange for me, right? But I gained, we both and me and the Cyclum, uh, I hope, gain from uh, our diversity. Yes. Well, so many topics you've mentioned, I don't know which one to But one, one thing that uh, caught my mind, you mentioned uh, that you take to the consideration the way that people want to be managed. Yes. Well, that's very admirable, but doesn't it uh, seem to a little bit too risky to, well, to bend to the needs of each one of your team members? Don't they, well, don't they prefer a little firm hand or is it the old school uh, type and style of managing? Doesn't and the well, one that doesn't, so, yeah. Yeah, it's all about culture, mm -hmm. right? So culture does matter. So at the very end, Yes, you want to work with people you kind of like and someone who understands you. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, I believe it's a little bit less important than like values and culture that we all propagate, right? Or, or you are uh, ad admired to, right? So, for example, there are people who is like more sprint mm -hmm. and more who is uh, marathon. <coughs> Right. And this is all actually about a little bit men and women. That's that's my belief, right? That sometimes women are more like more marathon, more long lasting, more stability, right? When men is just just the nature prefer more shortcuts, fast uh, results, uh, making, um, uh, and that could be a that could be a challenge why mm -hmm. you manage these two type of people. But you can gain out of it. You can make sure that those who, who can run long lasting marathon, but a little bit slow, you put them in more organizational, operational tasks in more long lasting uh, projects. And those who are more sprint based, you just put them for log hanging fruits projects, right? When you need okay. to get fast result. So I do, I truly believe that there is no people you cannot manage. There is the way you may approach different mm -hmm. personalities. What I would not advise do is, of course, if you see some toxicity and non-loyalty, non mm -hmm. then even if it's a, like an amazing professional, amazing results technicians, but if there is no loyalty or like no like different values in terms of why I am here, it's probably not going to work. And it's not about diversity or, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's more about um, attitude. Well, that's universal, I guess, because we can talk yeah. about diversity, we can talk about different cultures, different sexes, and so on and so on. But uh, at the end of the day, we are all uh, humans. And uh, it is the nature of one specific human that decides the that drives the way they work together in a yeah. team. So, yeah. so Absolutely. maybe, well, I guess I, I can just applaud you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and, and be a little bit envy. <laughs> okay, but um, let's talk a little, uh, a little about your the relationships that you maintain with your clients. You mentioned a hundred clients before. That is mm -hmm. very, very huge number. Impressive, and I, I, I obviously I, I, I think and I, and I guess that the managing of so many um, so many clients, so many entities must be challenging. But um, I was wondering because uh, because of well, obviously very diverse and very uh, multicultural nature of your clients. Do you um, do you rather bend to their needs, needs and uh, bend uh, solutions that you provide in Cyclum to the specific needs of a client, or you would rather uh, you would rather um, propose the solutions that are or that have already been developed, and maybe uh, adjust them just a little bit to the clients. What's your uh, what's your strategy there? Oh. Well, let me start from your first part mm -hmm. of the question about like 100 clients. Um, so I would say that the climate has changed, right? The market has changed in IT. Uh, it's been driven first by post-COVID, right? Mm -hmm. This K-shape K-shape recovery, right. right? When some of the companies just grow up rapidly, like healthcare or uh, <coughs> uh, technological, right? And some of them just, just 
struggling right yeah. and struggling significantly to say the least yeah to say the least like just recently my uh, my friend told me this about uber eats who just basically uh, damaged uh, uh, all the small food businesses like pizzas uh, etc et yeah. right but uh, but all the almost all hundred clients that i have all of them now being in a different tra- trajectory of k mm-hmm. right they all try to gain from the new technologies, right? From AI, from machine learning. And um, uh, for us, uh, for, for companies like Cyclone, it's very important now to be flexible, right? So um, you have to be flexible enough to get to the right stakeholders at the client side. You cannot just say, okay, this is my product or this is what Mm -hmm. I'm doing and uh, take it or leave it. It's no longer working. It could work five, seven years ago where it was huge demand. Uh, Companies more been like in packaging uh, form. But now you really, really have to be flexible and adaptive and adaptive. Uh, you really have to get to the right stakeholders on the client side because this is the, the mistake number one uh, account managers could do is just talking to wrong people. Mm-hmm. You have to be flexible enough to get to the clients to, uh, to get the right business angle with them. Um, and then you, you have to, st- you, but, but you still have to have your own expertise and product to show that uh, to show the value for the client that your value is more than they pay because okay. this this is where the IT companies has a challenge now because like five seven years ago we've been like in Ukraine in Poland it was type of outsourcing um, uh, uh, business right we basically kind of sell ingredients to the receipts right mm-hmm. we sell a very nice developers Poland is well known as like highly skilled uh, developers, very proven uh, technology expertise, uh, still uh, less cost than uh, America or Europe, right? Mm. And five, seven years, it was it was kind of fine. But now we need to get higher in the value chain. We cannot no longer sell just people, let's put it this way, or half-baked projects. We need to show to our clients that the, the cost they pay is less than the value than than we are we are getting okay, them. Just, so for, excuse me, just one question: Why? Uh, what's the nature of a change? Is it the bigger competition, or the competition has grown uh, as well as you, and they develop higher, uh, w- uh, better provided technologies? Is that the matter, or uh, are we still in a times where where costs and cutting costs and growing costs of maintaining business uh, overall as itself? has overcome the uh, the costs of uh, technology implement um, well I would I would put it I would answer the following mm-hmm. on your question so first of all covid this k-shape mm-hmm. recovery and second one the war in uh, Europe mm-hmm. right and the recession it it uh, it makes client be their risk appetite to invest mm-hmm. is lower now so what I am observing is that almost all the company now in a, in a mode where they are looking in their PNL and budgets and try to save some costs. So as you may observe, there is not many startups now is going right. on like in Poland, right? Uh, there is not many new projects that company just start, invest, mm-hmm. and then when they have money right when they are not in a cost saving mode they just give it to any outsourcing company like cyclum right they just give it to us we fully pack uh, the solution the team and we deliver and they were ready to risk now the risk appetite is lower and as a result companies also looking at their cost and the trend the second trend so um, uh, to the risk appetite is that it's in sourcing like in housing development which also COVID helped, right? Because um, that's uh, when, an interesting word. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, COVID. <laughs> business is business, yeah, right? Yeah, business, business is business for, for 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 companies, not for us, yeah. right? <laughs> well, for our clients. Um, so um, so now the companies prefer to have uh, decision makers like product owners, delivery managers in house. 
and then just outsource simple task to outsource mm-hmm. providers. Right. That's why, for example, we may observe that in Trumasto we don't ha- we start having less delivery managers roles mm-hmm. and delivery directors roles because before. Uh, the secret sauce of Poland or in Ukraine, for example, was a like fully ready team, uh, skilled mm-hmm. team remotely, but sit in one location, right. um, agile, scrum, talking and clients visiting them to support. After COVID, basically sitting in the office and being together uh, slightly changed, right. right? So it can be distributed team. So basically what uh, I observe clients to some of clients that they are like, okay, I have my delivery owners, product owners in house. This is the people I trust, who is qualified, mm-hmm. who knows my company. And then I can directly outsource it from some other location. And maybe I should do cheaper a little bit. So maybe India, right? Maybe some other locations. I don't think that the listeners would allow it, but that's okay. <laughs> so I make it. So, so, but, but. There is a there is a way how what mm-hmm. to do with that right like let's stop do what we did before it's not gonna work anymore right. the the only way how uh, IT small companies uh, twenty people or thousands of people can survive is to provide the value to the client like mm-hmm. be higher in this value chain right you just cannot just send people on a rate card right you need to make sure you are ex- experience in product development you have um, um, uh, AI uh, adoption right you have uh, um, RPAs like for example Cyclum has right so we are not selling people lo- no longer right mm-hmm. we are selling solutions so client came for expertise and they technically don't really care anymore where people are located unless they get enough uh, value uh, from uh, from the uh, from the companies so i think uh, that trend will probably continue mm-hmm. for some period of time of course it's going to be some curve as soon as the sure. recovery will happen then uh, outsourcing again probably will be a um, uh, a trend, but we'll see because I think that the IT landscape will change itself with AI. Well, obviously, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. But that's great that you mentioned that the the shift of um, seeing Poland or maybe CEE in overall uh, the the shift from seeing as a outsourcing uh, outsourcing target to uh, attracting the solutions. Yeah, yeah. With, you you develop solutions and and uh, give out the whole yeah. teams with the uh, with the uh, um, fixed solutions, because it is an argument that uh, that could be beneficial while discussing and talking to that part of journalists or even um, well people here in, mm-hmm. in in Poland, Gdańsk, and Pomerania, and so on. Um, when we have to argue that we are no longer the this you know cheap labor location. Yeah. It has changed. It, it, we are not at the same place when we were seven, five years ago, uh, because our well, professionals, developers, and so on and so on, they are valued for their knowledge and expertise. Exactly. And well, that's our that's our priority to well to talk about it as loud as we can and promote ourselves. That's what we do here in Invest in Pomerania. Promote the location. Uh, not because of the costs, but because of a talent pool. And yeah. that's great that you, you, you've you noticed it as well Absolutely, while yeah. in contact with your with your clients. But just uh, just let's just get back to to the uh, initial point of my last question. So how do you well manage between the hundreds of well, hundreds of, of, of your clients? How do you um, You've mentioned that you approach each client individually and propose the the, the solutions uh, to their demand. But what if they are uh, reluctant to to your to your expertise? What if they are maybe or maybe did you have some experience where the client was fixed on an idea and you you have to bend over bend bend it, bend forward and backwards on proposing the solution? 
Oh, Do you yes. have a yeah, success story? Of course I have. Example? I have success stories, of Great. course. Okay, uh, let's go. Yeah, so managing 100 clients, uh, none of them grow or drop all the time, right? So they all have uh, different dynamics uh, now because mm -hmm. it's very diverse right. client base, right? So uh, first of all, I make sure that I prioritize uh, uh, um, what we do. There are some clients who require more attention and some clients who just want to make sure they have uh, good client experience but for example now not ready to grow at least uh, this year so for this client I just want to make sure they are uh, uh, approached in the right moment of time they mm -hmm. have care so it's a customer care right. rather than growth and uh, like expansion of the business but there are of course some clients where we by talking to them very oftenly because talking to your mm -hmm. client is the only what you could do I mean, we are uh, uh, underestimate the need to talk to client at least uh, at least once per month, right? Uh, to your uh, key stakeholders, right? But you need to talk to clients because the changes that happening now on the client side is um, uh, um, speed up signific uh, mm -hmm. significantly. Before people can be five, seven years on the role of CTO or CMO uh, or delivery managers now. Tomorrow you can talk to someone else and you need constantly to make sure that they, you are still doing business together. So talking to really? your clients, oh, of course, of course, that's, oh, now market is super hard. I mm. mean, there is no longer relaxing client is going to you. You really have to make sure you build the right relationship with them. And, um, uh, and uh, when you ask about the reluctancy, sometimes client reluctant because they don't don't know what they want mm -hmm. no they kind of know what they want but we try to tell them what they need <laughs> <laughs> always a good idea so just uh, just a recent example um, we have one client uh, uh, in pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. where we have um, uh, just a couple of people doing some work for them right and um, no we don't need anything no like we are fine, okay. you know, that's, that's, that's the reluctance you, you ask for. And then the question I ask always my client is, okay, okay, I understand, but can you please tell me like, um, um, how, how much out of ex your expenses Siklum get the portion. Mm -hmm. for example, don't tell me in, in in a volume, right? But like, how much budget you have for someone uh, for IT uh, mm -hmm. uh, services? And if someone is told you like, uh, oh Olga, or like, oh Siklum, you get me ten percent, then you have ninety percent of opportunities, right? Okay. So always a good question to ask. So as soon as you understand that there is a there is a demand inside the client, then of course uh, uh, inside Siklum we have centers of excellence. Mm -hmm. And depending on when you talk to client and you understand what they really need, is it the QA services, is it the AI adoption, is it the product, is it the customer experience, which is now a very popular service, right? So then I have like experts and I just let them talk. Okay. Always a good idea. Technicians talk to technicians. Right. They have their own language. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's what you also mentioned that... Uh, we should stop talking people. We should stop. We should start talking technologies right. and solutions, right? And and TrueMaster is like is amazing place where there are lots of people with amazing experience working in uh, big corporate IT companies in small startups, right? Mm -hmm. I am sure we can gain and get this expertise uh, to and to get much more businesses and clients. Mm. Okay, so let's take it up to another subject. Uh, I, I'm, I'm always find it, finding it hard to talk about women in tech because I'm a man, yeah? And I'm, I feel deep down in my stomach that I should not be allowed to talk about that, all that, that le let's just give a voice to, to the women. And, but I have to because I'm curious and because I, I, I think of myself as a, well, maybe not modern man or so on and so on. So, uh, I would love to take from your previous experience because you were general manor, manager for Poland, Ukraine and Bulgaria, right? Yes, so yeah. you had to manage the country teams. Yep. Um, has the business itself, tech business, uh, IT, uh, IT environment, has it changed over the last couple of years? Uh, or is it all just, well, uh, one big greenwashing and you still have to fight the glass ceiling and of you know 40 plus ma male managers that just don't let you 
uh, sit, uh, sit alongside them uh, at the table. And even if they let you, uh, well, you, you just have to sit there and maybe look pretty, not, uh, uh, not give any thoughts and, and, and so on and so on. Is it still the same, um, um, the same environment that it was five years ago or mm. well, has it actually question. changed? Very good question. I was th I'm thinking about it all the time, mm. as you can imagine, right? Um, I think it has changed. It definitely has changed. Uh, of course, there are still lots of things to do to make it work better and to gain from from women at work, right? Um, um, I think that, uh, well, even like Poland statistics says, right, that uh, uh, IT market uh, is 17% of uh, women, right, right uh, working in IT and, every, uh, and everybody else is men, right? And it hasn't changed uh, during the last two years. Mm -hmm. it, it's become more or less stable. In Siglum, we have a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. bigger percentage, I think. Um, I, I think it's about 25, 20 ish percent. Um, but you know, the way I think about it is let's start a little bit early this question. How many women actually go into technical universities? Mm -hmm. So maybe let's just have a hypothesis that maybe those 17% is actually all women that, that graduated from IT, uh, uh, Gdansk Polytechnica or somewhere else, right? So why? From a starting point, we are women do not perceive building career as IT as an opportunity for them. So actually, if I if I may, of course, I yeah. know the answer. Oh, uh, wow. uh, about the uh, uh, actually our Gdansk Tech because the percentage of uh, women entering the mm -hmm. uh, the higher education is much higher uh -huh. the, than the percentage of women actually graduating. Mm -hmm. And that's a um, kind of complex problem because yeah. during the five years of, um, of higher education, well, they tend to somehow be, uh, get disencouraged, mm -hmm. right? I don't know if it's the environment of their peers or whether, and that's a risky uh, hypothesis, the environment of, uh, um, of teachers, actually, their professors. I I think I have a slightly idea about the answer, but I don't want to. I don't want to to sound too uh, too obvious. Yeah. Mm, so yeah, the, the, um, it's not like the women um, do not have no knowledge of opportunities okay, of IT uh -huh. uh, of IT environment. They they know that it, uh, that it is the 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 future and that that it is the opportunity to actually shape the future but somehow along the way along the process uh, um, they get this d d discouraged and that is something to build on your uh, 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 on what you said that is something that well we should work on yes there is a, and there is a social pressure let's be honest yes, right it is. so it start it starts from a families it starts from a families mm -hmm. then it's a graduation then it's a choosing of uh, of profession. Like for example, why why they go to teachers or uh, medical university? I think it's much less, uh, like not a problem, but less. Uh, so the women goes to to be teacher, mm -hmm. to be doctor, to be lawyer, to be accountant, right? There is, I don't feel that there ever be a problem in that area between. Uh, diversification of men and women because men and women always in that area been equally when women I would say been a little bit more but why because from a as, as I answer this question because I've been graduated in finance I can tell you my story like when mm -hmm. I finished school uh, my parents told me okay so finance is the way because this is the only way where you can get money but also be accepted Right? Yeah. Because you're going to work with the environment of women and Olga, you will have role model of successful woman. Mm -hmm. How it is important to have someone next to you who is like you, but 20 plus 20 years who show you, I could do it. I, 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 I've done it. You mm -hmm. also can do it. And when you go to IT, you see the men, they are career paths, their environment, their fam So everything is different. Uh, in uh, how they perceive themselves, how they see they, themselves and family, in future, 
I don't know, career and how they behave in, in, internally in families and right. in the society, right? So it's very hard for women to, to gain out of it, to learn from someone. You, 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 you pointed so right about teachers. You didn't want to go into, the, into that route, but that's exactly what is happening. That's why I always encourage women to take mentors. Mm-hmm. I am mentoring lots of women, and when I talk to them, I see that they're, she's smart, she's capable, she, she's technician, she has three kids. It's, she still have to take care of it. She still have to take care of uh, uh, family lifestyle. And the fourth one, the yeah, husband. Yeah, yeah, of course, always there. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes there is no husband, right? So you have to actually try to, 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 to support your family, uh, your parents sometimes, uh, two, mm-hmm. three kids or one kid or no kids, right? And... Uh, and they're like, yeah, what, what can I do? I'm just, I'm just, I just have to take care. I said like, no, you can do much more. Why are you shy? Don't be shy because look, if you do, so by my experience, by my example, I show them that it's possible, mm-hmm. but of course you have to rebalance. We right. can't always get what we want, but we should try, but we also have to be careful in balancing and um, Was that a Rolling Stone quote? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, personally, right? I'll just dig in sure, deep sure. to my uh, to my experience. I never quite understood the social pressure because, well, I'm a father myself, and apart from breastfeeding, uh, we've managed with my uh, with my wife to somehow balance the duties. Uh, between the two of us and actually she's uh, she's more su- successful than I am and that's okay by me because our kid was never seen as an obstacle or I don't know I don't know what's the right word not to sound too too abusive but th- the social well mm, in differences well why can't we as a society overcome them why isn't it natural to somehow balance the roles between uh, well actually parents right because that's uh, when we think of the basic basics when we think as uh, uh, about the careers uh, uh, and differences between men and women uh, the parenting is the one thing that determines a lot of things because first of all Mm, women are uh, more likely to uh, not to engage into the B2B contract, rather a contract of employment, because they they feel the responsibility for the child. But then, uh, of course, there's a difference between the paychecks, right? You, you, you earn a lot more on a B2B contract. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's the way that the Polish uh, lawmakers shaped the, uh, the, the opportunities because mm-hmm. uh, we have a much much more attractive uh, parent leave for the women than for the men so well there's a hmm, there's a whole network of um, of things that needs to act, at we least in change. Poland needs to change and needs to be reworked to to somehow balance the the, uh, the 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 chances and the opportunities at the very start from the moment you graduate uh, mm-hmm. from high school right because mm-hmm. we've established that the moment you, you you start higher education the very first day the very first teacher that talks to you the very exactly. the very first group of peers that you develop your <clears throat> your interest with uh, well that's the first thing that can both encourage and disencourage women to to go into exactly. the tech business well i can't agree more exactly i mean we should start from the very beginning even mm. like as you said like you and uh, your wife you are you are equal right mm. you you started like that i'm not sure about your parents maybe your parents also drive this uh, uh, no nope. uh, you see so you kind of get it and change it right yep. but um, you probably have some influencers aside of your teacher or of your parents who support you in this journey that's that's how i can imagine like mm-hmm. like myself like like when i finished graduation i just left my home mm-hmm. for two years and just listened to someone else of course i love my parents and right. my my father always want me to, to 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 aim for more always he told me all the time like you have to do more you have to you have to try you have to leave you have to live in another country you have to try a new profession 
right? Why well, my mother more like be being in finance because that's mm. her experience set. Mm-hmm. Like now seems like to be accountant is a safe site. Mm, yes, it is. Right? It's, it's always it's, safe to be an accountant. <laughs> yeah, and, but especially in, 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 in late 90s, right. uh, it was like the only way in Ukraine where you can uh, you can get a job, right? Well, the so, golden age of transformation, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I should say it should start from a very beginning. We should, the coaching, the teaching, the mentorship mm-hmm. of women is the, is, the, is the high priority because we have to let them um we have to let them out from this social pressure because it still exists it's it's yeah it it's it's, uh, it it's like i can again give you my example when i after the war i came into poland right and of course my husband stay in mm-hmm. the ukraine he couldn't get out from the country right and i've been here with two kids getting new role uh no know, knowing new language uh, mm-hmm. you know and uh I have to do it all the same as a woman, right? Mm-hmm. So I didn't have anyone who can, of, of course, then I, ha- and then I had to think, okay, I need to prioritize. So I, I, I ask uh, Nanny to help to bring her to you to Poland because I know I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't manage hundred right. clients and also having two kids adopting in a new country. Mm-hmm. Right. And also the, all of us uh, start learning a new language, which right. we kind of understand, but still. Right. And all the paperwork and all the Ujon stuff and mm-hmm. all the others. Right. right. And as a woman, I feel the pressure that I am responsible for that. I am only myself. I am responsible for that. Yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah, that's that's true, of course. But because I am a, I am a in operations for for many many years i know how to uh, delegate oh so you agile your of family course, of course that's <laughs> okay. how we, that, that that's how it works like you shouldn't do anything by yourself mm, right uh, calculate how much one hour of uh, of yours cost and calculate how much you spend one hour cleaning the dishes mm. and you will find out that it's better just to ask for help okay <laughs> that's a good seat for the future yeah absolutely <laughs> okay back to business sure. uh, there's one thing that i always uh, keep to keep right to the end and i ask all of my all of my guests uh, at this podcast what does the future hold for mm-hmm. us and especially i think you're a great person to ask that question because of your experience and because of your well first of all your contact with employers uh, employees and nowadays your contact with your clients so what's your take overall globally at the it industry uh, i don't want to ask the big ai question because everyone asks it but if you want to talk about this let, 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 let's just leave it well ai will change the world it's actually mm-hmm. it's not ai it's actually machine learning right well, so what right. do we know about ai is just actually machine who learn uh, yeah. uh, the, the question so it's definitely will uh, it's definitely will change the world right and now it help in those k shape it helps more those to survive uh, mm-hmm. companies uh, there are also big it companies who is adopting uh, ai so yes it's happening uh, let me speak about it from people perspective. Right. So maybe that um, would be interesting. So how I think about it is that definitely the profession of IT will slightly change because what has happened is that, yes, AI, machine learning, it's helping developers, but to be honest, with you, it mostly help experts. Right. So the complexity of, uh, of IT as a as a nature, it started being so complex and to teach juniors and middle start being very difficult and long. Mm -hmm. So what we may observe now, and I think we may observe it for some period of time is that the job for juniors and middles uh, drastically declined, right? I was afraid. So you said that. Yeah, so we are still want experts and those who are like expert, they can get from AI, but those who are, who was a little bit like in the middle or in the entry level, that's mm-hmm. difficult for them, right? And um, AI will uh, change the profession. Uh, I think uh, that's going to be kind of three types of uh, IT. It's going to be pure coders, experts, mm-hmm. who is going to do like super experts. It's going to be integrators. 
someone who knows how to integrate this solution and they don't need to be a coders, right? Mm -hmm. It's someone who is like maybe DevOps type of role, but someone who knows how to integrate. And there's going to be domain experts who is more um, like um, um, either like new BA, okay. new era BA or this prompt experts who know how to r ask right question of AI to get the right answer. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that the structure of IT market itself uh, going to change and uh, would be good if companies and uh, would be ready for that mm -hmm. from education perspective and from um, diversity perspective and from how to get new businesses uh, as well uh, in, uh, into your business. Okay. And do you in Ciclum, do you encourage well coders to and will your um, professionals to uh, take advantage of uh, the yeah. machine learning or do you maybe develop some solutions yes, in-house? Yes, yeah, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, uh, we have a very big uh, now uh, line, a uh, business line where uh, we are helping our clients mm -hmm. to adopt AI, but we're also adopting internally, okay. right? So we have education programs, uh, we have upskilling programs. Great. So I think that's like... Uh, it's, so you it's don't want to be left behind. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's great to hear. Okay, let's wrap it up. Uh, my guest was uh, Olga Kuraksa from Cyclone. Thank you. Thank Once you so again, much. Thank was, you for inviting. It was, it was wonderful to talk to you. My name is Radosu Kunarczyk and that was Business and Tide by University in Pomerania. Thank you and see you and hear you next time. Thank you.